Приветствую вашу инициативу. Мне понятна ваша озабоченность по поводу положения сложившегося в районе Карибского моря, так как советское правительство также рассматривает это положение как весьма опасное и требующее немедленного вмешательства организаций объединенных наций. For obfuscation, for distortion, for confusing language, and for double talk. And I must confess to you that I'm glad I don't. But if I understood what you said, you said that my position had changed, that today I was defensive because we didn't have the evidence to prove our assertions that your government had installed long-range missiles in Cuba. Well, let me say something to you, Mr. Ambassador. We do have the evidence. We have it, and it's clear and incontrovertible. And let me say something else. Those weapons must be taken out of Cuba. And next, let me say to you with a, that if I understood you, with a trespass on credulity that excels your best, you said that our position had changed since I spoke here the other day because of the pressures of world opinion and the majority of the United Nations. Well, let me say to you, sir, you are wrong again. We have had no pressure from anyone whatsoever. We came in here today to indicate our willingness to discuss Mr. Uthant's proposals. And that is the only change that has taken place. But let me also say to you, sir, that there has been a change. You, the Soviet Union, has sent these weapons to Cuba. You, the Soviet Union, has upset the balance of power in the world. You, the Soviet Union, has created this new danger, not the United States. And you asked with a fine show of indignation why the president didn't tell Mr. Gromyko on last Thursday about our evidence. At the very time that, the, that Mr. Gromyko was blandly denying to the president that the, United, uh, that the USSR was placing such weapons on sites in the new world. Well, I'll tell you why. Because we were assembling the evidence, and perhaps it would be instructive to the world to see how a Soviet official, how far he would go in perfidy. Perhaps we wanted to know if this country faced another example of nuclear deceit, like that one a year ago, when in stealth, the Soviet Union broke the nuclear test moratorium. And while you were asking, while we're asking questions, let me ask you why your government, your foreign minister, deliberately, cynically deceived us about the nuclear buildup in Cuba. And finally, the other day, Mr. Zorin, I remind you that you didn't deny the existence of these weapons. Instead, we heard that they had suddenly become defensive weapons. But today, again, if I heard you correctly, you now say they don't exist, or that we haven't proved they exist. With another fine flood of rhetorical scorn. All right, sir. Let me ask you one simple question. Do you, Ambassador Zorin, deny that the USSR has placed and is placing medium and intermediate range missiles and sites in Cuba? Yes or no? Don't wait for the translation, yes or no? Продолжайте вашу речь, господин Стивенсон. В свое время вы получите ответ. Mr. Stevenson, would you continue your statement, please? You will receive the answer in the due course. Do not worry. <laughs> I'm prepared to wait for my answer until hell freezes over, if that's your decision. And I'm also prepared to present the evidence in this room. 